the latest in our series, looking at how homegrown business and British industries are faring. Yes, five million pairs of shoes and boots are made each year here uh, by companies such as Churches, Lokes and Barkers. John Sargent speak to see how another brand came back from the dead. This is Northamptonshire. They've been making shoes in this part of Middle England for centuries. But of course, tradition doesn't guarantee success. I'm visiting a factory that not so long ago was on the brink of closure. Now, thanks largely to the vision of one man, it's prospering again. This is NPS Shoes in the village of Wollaston. The company was founded in 1881, when five men formed a workers' cooperative called the Northamptonshire Productive Society. The company went from strength to strength, its success partly attributed to its joint ownership by local people. I started here when I was 16 years old. Um, the, the factory was in the village, I lived in the village, which was flourishing at the time. We were making around about £5,000 a week. Things were looking fine. But the good times didn't last. First, China flooded the market with lower quality but cheaper footwear. And then, some bad luck. We had two major contracts. One of them went bust, so we lost that one. The other one dropped us. The company that dropped them was Doc Martins. NPS had made their boots under a license worth hundreds of thousands of pounds a year. As sales slumped, the cooperative was plunged into crisis, its business model in ruins and losing money hand over fist. The future of this factory looked hopeless. Over a hundred years of industrial history was about to end. We've worked here for so many years and then thinking all our work, you know, would be lost. It was just awful, to be honest with you. We just didn't think that we were going to work in the shoe industry again. The factory was about to be sold to a property developer, when at the 11th hour, a knight in shining armour arrived with a rescue plan. Ivor Tilly used to earn his living supplying shoemakers. He'd sold his business, but wasn't ready to hang up his boots. I'd heard that NPS here were in trouble, so I thought, well, it's a bit of a shame for it to go. You know, 1881, a lot of skill here as well. See what we can do. Ivor wrote to the staff offering to buy the business. He gave a guarantee of a year's work and expressed confidence in the company's Made in Britain heritage. I always said, I won't pay you what a property developer will, knock it down to be houses, but I'll give you a fair price that I think for the business. And they said, you could in three weeks' time say, oh, it's not working, not working, sorry, uh, uh, we're closing. You know, and you could then have sold it to the property developer yourself and made more money. And I had to say, you then have to believe me that I won't do that and give it a fair shot to try and turn the business round. His offer was accepted, helped by the fact he lived in Wollaston. We knew him from the village, we knew what he was like, so we gave him a go, either that or lose your job. The company changed its business model. No more churning out thousands of the same pair of shoes or boots. Instead, a big emphasis on templates which could be customised to suit individual retailers. What are the things you can change on it? The eyelets can be a different colour, it's something as simple as the laces, um, the whole detail around here, there's lots of different uh, leather types and colours that you can choose. Any size retailer can start with just 12 pairs to try the market softly and if it grows and is a big success then they can order and scale up accordingly. The Made in Britain is the, probably the biggest draw and then combined with the flexibility and the, the small minimum order quantity, that's a massive advantage. The people here never regretted allowing Ivor Tilly to take over NPS and end over a century of being run as a cooperative. At the time we had to share with the profits, where well, now we don't get that no more, but I mean, we'd rather have a job. This factory has thrived by moving away from mass production to the top end of the market. It shows that Made in Britain can succeed again through optimism, hard work and a fair deal of luck.